Tua sp- spoke yesterday, and uh, he explained. He was singing that song. No, he was not singing that song. Oh, he he explained though the play against Cincinnati, what happened in the play, and then also talked about some conversations he's had about the long term concerns when it comes to his head injuries. I wouldn't say it was scary for me at the time because there were there there was a point where I was unconscious, so I, I couldn't you know really tell what was going on. I remember the entire night up to the point where I got tackled, but after I got tackled, I I don't remember much from there. Getting carted off, I don't remember that. But I do remember things uh, that were going on when I was in the ambulance and then when I arrived at the hospital. There's not necessarily as much long-term risk. You know, let's say guys get about six concussions. Well, those guys that only have six concussions that are playing the position that I'm playing where we don't hit as much are less susceptible to getting CTE later on in their years than someone who's playing a position where they're constantly taking hits or blows to the head, which would be O-line, D-line, linebackers. And that's kind of uh, some of the information that I've you know, been given from a lot of these uh, doctors, you know, that are best of the best in, in their field. So there it is, uh, too. I'm sure somebody will have a problem with what he just said. Uh, you know, well, the, I love Tua, a doctor. Man. I love Tua. I he's, love. he's a good dude. It, it just is not a doctor to, to be speaking in those terms, but no, but he can speak. It's his opinion, he but it's nice for him. To, it's nice for him to speak his opinion on it. And yeah. And and to to his point, he is right. There are yeah. other guys. I made the point on my Instagram, on my social the other the, this past Sunday with with Kelsey. King of man, guys are hitting their heads all the time. Guys are hitting their heads all the time. He's he's one hundred percent right about that. With different positions, it's just it's just like polarizing, or it's so sensationalized when certain people hit their heads and they react the way that they react. You know, guys shake that S off all the time, and nobody even sees it. Nobody even sees it. So, for you know, I, I like them shedding light on it the way that he did. I just would say, for me, I caution guys that that speak in, in you know, kind of medical terms when you're not in the medical field. You know, and that's, that's – I always feel like that's just rule of thumb protecting yourself – you know, by staying away from medical talk, speaking terms of your terms, it's no problem. But when once you get off into talking about the whole CTE thing and what it represents, I mean, I just always I'm I cringe, I cringe unless unless you're a doctor that that's playing football. Even if you're a doctor, I don't. I mean, we still don't know a lot about CTE, about head injuries. You know why some people are more susceptible than others too. I mean, to your point. There are a lot of guys who they get hit in the head, they, they get up, they shake it off. There's not an issue. There's other guys who get knocked out all the time. Like I, I play with some guys, some safeties, who they used to be big hitters. But you knew every single time, like, they got that big hit on the sideline, like, oh, all right, well, hope, you know, you, you hope he's okay. But, like, he, they would knock themselves out. Like, almost every single time there'd be a big hit like that. Oof. And so it's, it's tough. But, I mean, the, the concussion story and his – thing like I can relate to I, I remember when I, my first bad one in college I remember not like I remember the next like like later that day waking up in the infirmary in the hospital and you know kind of talking through some things with my dad I eventually got released and then the next day like coming in watching film with my teammates and be like man I don't remember any of this like I didn't remember anything I played the entire second half of a game and I think they – like, we, we had a drive where we went up. And then after that, like, people in the huddle were like, dude, he's being weird. Like, you, got, you all got to take him out. Like, there's something wrong with him. I started dry heaving, I guess, on the sidelines, and then that was it. But I don't remember – to this day. And, like, I, I went back, watched some of it, and goes like, man, I, I probably shouldn't have made that throw. But it worked out. Like, it, it was just one of those things where it's a crazy experience. I'm, I'm sure it's scary to some people. It might have been scary to my dad at the time since he was kind of – with me step by step through it but the reality is like i'm okay you know uh, we made it through man I mean, i'm here with you guys you know we're, yeah, we're doing you okay go. you know uh you, you know what pisses me off about it though is when you get people on the outside who try and instruct players 
the risks and the dangers of yeah. what they're what they're doing. And here's here's just the facts. And this is probably going to bother a lot of people, but I'm one of these people, so so I'll, I'll speak on behalf of the group. The reason why those players do what they do. And, and there's a clear separation between, between what you guys do and what we do. Like, we, we can't understand the idea of getting concussed like that and willingly going out there to engage in another car accident potentially the next week. We can't understand that. But that's why you guys are the point oh one percent And I'm not trying to kiss anybody's ass here. It's just a reality. It's the same with boxers. It's the same with fighters. There's a certain thing that you have to have in your mind to where you come to terms with the risk that's involved with what you're about to do. You're, you're, you're engaging in sanctioned violence. And when you engage in that, bad things are going to happen from time to time. And it's like when I hear people say, well, you know, Tua's talking about all these uh, long-term issues. Uh, clearly, uh, he's, not, he's not thinking about his future. Or, you know, when he, when he speaks so nonchalant about stuff like that, the, the, the reason why – we don't do and can't understand or comprehend what it is that those guys go through and what you guys go through on the field is because we're not we can't get ourselves to that place but you guys can so when i hear people try and speak on behalf of athletes or 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 combat fighters or somebody that well you know you got to be careful you got to think about your long term Look, I'm sure they do think about their long-term health. I, I guarantee that's part of it. But you love what you do, you accept the risks, and you move on with it. And when I hear people talk on behalf of those guys, it just irritates me. I, I just, I'm not a fan. We mean of people it. on Twitter. Is yeah, that, it's just, that, yeah. it's just okay. people in the media. Like, well, the NFL needs to do something. They need to do more. There's Let's long-term. About Mike Florio. Who it's just, it, it's, it's Call NFL, him out, NFL Call media. Him out. Mike Florio. <laughs> all these other guys that you don't listen. You. You can't understand because you don't know what it's like to put yourself and come to terms and accept the fact and the realities of what's going to happen. We can't do that. We're not physically able to, and psychologically we can't get to that place. And you guys can, yet everybody on the outside wants to speak on behalf of what's, re- what's best for players. People make choices. People make decisions. And that, that's just part of the deal. And, and, and I just when I hear the coverage of this, that's why I'm fascinated to see – how Tua is monitored moving forward because he's going to take another big hit, right? He, like you've said it before, Brady, he's had problems getting rid of the football. He, Tua acknowledged it yesterday and said, yeah, I probably got to get rid of the ball faster. Yeah. I, I doubt he's just going to fix that in one game. So this no. could happen again. So well, I, it, The hard thing is for him too is it, it's part of what made him special in college. It's part of what makes him who he is as a player and special. Like that's one of those knacks that he has is he can extend plays and then make something out of those plays. The problem is there's a risk that comes along with that. And when he and he's in a position where look, he's a you know, first round quarterback that's trying to get to that second contract. So to your point, like he does face that well, he takes a tough hit. Everyone's like, oh, no, we got to go out and get him. He, and he might have to wave people off, be like, dude, I'm fine. Like, stop trying to put me in bubble wrap. I want to be out here to play. Let me go play. I mean, it, it, it's a hard conversation to have because ultimately I think what you're talking about is everyone on the outside trying to act like they're protecting that player from himself. The problem is, is that player understands the risks and they're willing to take on those risks because this is what they spent their entire life preparing for. So that's, that's where it comes to a crossroads is how do you go about managing the fact that even when a player is accountable and responsible for knowing the risks that they're taking on, how do you go about protecting them from themselves or should you? be in that position to do it. I mean, we, we don't talk about this in boxing, do we? No. I mean, when do we ever have any head, you know, conversations about boxing? Well, it's just assumed, right? Like, how many fighters probably shouldn't be fighting that have taken one too many knockouts, one too many blows to the head, yet we don't say that with them. Like, man, this guy's old. I don't know if he should keep doing this to us. We never talk about that. Well, you remember when Manny Pacquiao got flatlined by Juan Manuel Ooh, Marquez? Yes. I mean, it was a brutal knockout. Man. and That was a bad, bad and, and look. A face was, plant. And, and yeah. everyone said he'll never be the same. Like, Juan Manuel Marquez, I think, fought like one or two more times after that. Pacquiao fought for years after that and never got knocked down or knocked out again, ever. Yeah. Like, people are built different. Like, it's just, it, it's what it is. Like, some you know. people can, can hey, withstand. You know? Yeah. You know. Right, LeVar? Hashtag Jonas. built different. Built different. Yeah. Jonas Knox. 